My name is Lanny LaValle, and that was an E4. Um, and then we were operated a lot. After that, we, uh, in February, we pulled in to Hong Kong for Liberty. I pulled some Liberty there. I went and spent uh, three days at the uh, Hong Kong Hilton Hotel and it cost me $5 a night, uh, American money. So it was quite an experience. I had a good time and like everybody when you're in Hong Kong, the same thing. What do I buy? What's the best deal? And you learned again. So clothing was the deal in Hong Kong. You went in and uh, they actually measured you uh, for everything. Shoes, they took your feet measurement, your width, your length. They actually made shoes. You didn't buy shoes like we do in the States today. Go into a store. They actually made your shoes to fit your feet. Uh, the same thing with clothing. The clothing was made um, gold threaded. You bought expensive clothes, uh, cashmere, mohair, sweaters, sports coats, uh, had a navy dress suit, you always had a navy dress blue uniform made of doe skin. And so, uh, anyway, you bought some pretty expensive clothes, but it was relatively inexpensive. And then one of the things that when you went into a clothing store, they always had a case of beer for you. So the more you drank, the more you bought. So it was a good promotion. So anyway, I bought about $1,500 worth of clothes American cost, I think it cost me less than $150 um, American money. But the exchange rates, when you're talking about money, that was always interesting at the time. There was, in Hong Kong, there was five Hong Kong dollars for every American dollar. And in Japan, when you switch money, there was 760 yen for every dollar. So a lot of times you didn't really understand the exchange rates. It wasn't anything that you were relatively versed in, and I remember to go back to Japan, that I took 100 American dollars over, and I got 760,000 yen. I didn't have enough pockets to put the money in. I had it in socks, pockets, everywhere as so I was money. But you could go and buy a dinner in Japan for $2 and 250 yen. I mean, Everything was so inexpensive that you had money galore and you didn't know what to do with it. Well, to step over, over my career, most of that money, once you left port, there wasn't anything you could do with it, so I saved it. So I've still got a lot of currency from different countries saved in a jar at home that a number of the countries that we visited, you just took it back and, you know, you didn't exchange it because it you weren't going to go to a bank, you weren't going to, at the end of the day or the end of the tour that you were there, your leave. So anyway, to get back to the other stuff, so Hong Kong purchased the uh, clothing, spent uh, three days at r and &R in there. Then we went back online. Now summer's in there, and I'm not sure of time frames here, the chronological order, but uh, a lot of things that we did coming over, we went through some of the initiations that the Navy does. We went through the international date line, which was kind of crazy because you do the same day twice. You went over, let's hypothetically say, you cross the date line um, October 2nd, then the next day it's October 2nd again. Instead of October 3rd, you're going like, wait a minute. We just did October, so it was like Groundhog Day. You did the same day twice. And then you did the other initiation program where you went from a, a polywog, which is a, per, a sailor who never went over the equator. You did the initiation, you became a shellback, which now means you are one of the sailors that have actually crossed the equator of the earth. So you did some initiation programs on the way over and uh, became part of these orders, as they were called. So then we, um, going back to where I had left off, we went to the Philippines a number of times into Longapo, which was Subic Bay. We would go there for leave, uh, probably two or three times for various reasons. Again, most of the time we pulled in the port, you were rearming, resupplying, we did a lot of our 
fueling out at sea. We would pull up to tankers or oilers, or we refuel off in carriers. One of the two, you didn't really refuel inland too much. So everything was done out at sea on the move, which could be uh, terrifying at times, scary, because you would hit some rough seas. And once you hit these rough seas, you were trying to rearm and you were pretty much pushed all over the place like a cork in a, in, a, in a bathtub. So we did hit rough weather, you know, talking about weather, we did hit typhoons, we did hit um, some pretty rough seas at times. Um, but sometimes you were aware, sometimes you weren't aware, were not aware that you were running into some of these uh, issues, but you adjusted. There were always guys that got uh, seasick. Um, it was difficult uh, at times. Um, I initially got sick coming out of Japan one time and uh, a chief petty officer, of course I had gone over the night before ashore and I had a couple of beers too many probably. And I was, we had left the next day and I wasn't aware that we were running into a hurricane uh, in the uh, Sea of Japan. So I got sick and the chief petty officer said uh, to me, LaValle, I'm gonna tell you one thing and only one thing. The night before you leave land, you don't go out and party. So because you know what's gonna happen. So that's the first thing you do. And the second thing that if you know we're gonna hit storms and you are a person that's susceptible to seasickness, you eat saltine crackers. So his advice was go up to the locker outside the galley, grab yourself a box of saltines, eat the saltines. That was the cure. So I never did, again, go out and party too hard the night before we left for sea. And even if I didn't, I still went in knowing that we were going to hit rough seas, I got the saltine crackers. So the two cures for seasickness, don't drink, eat saltine crackers. So that was pretty good advice from a chief, an old chief. He had probably been in 28 years that time. And so he had had the experience, obviously, and somebody passed that on to him. So even today, when I'm with friends and we're out fishing and we happen to be in the ocean and doing rough water, I will tell my friends, my sons, I have four sons, I'm gonna bring some saltine crackers, boys, and it works. So <laughs> it always settled me down.